<laughs> What's up, brothers? Hope everybody's doing well out there. In today's video, we're going to talk about getting a woman to submit to you. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This isn't a topic that I really even care about, but it's a topic that a lot of people in the manosphere are obsessed with. So I'm going to go ahead and cover it. Now, the first thing that I want you guys to understand is you can't force a woman to submit to you. You can't force anybody to do anything that they don't want to do. If a woman is going to submit to you, it has to be a decision that she has made, that she's comfortable making, and it will happen naturally when you reach that point. Now, the second thing that I want you to understand is most of the advice that you get in the manosphere is not coming from a marketplace of ideas. It's coming from a marketplace of businessmen who are trying to get you excited, stir up emotions, and make money off of you. That's just the way business works, guys. You know, that's your red pill for the day. <laughs> now, with that being said, how do you get a woman to submit to you? Well, I'll tell you how you don't get a woman to submit to you. You don't get a woman to submit to you by following alpha male and beta male advice you know, women don't care if you're an alpha male or a beta male. They don't care if you're a nice guy or a bad boy. They don't care if you're a high value man or a low value man when it comes to them submitting to you. A lot of guys will tell you, you have to have higher sexual market value than her. You have to have, you know, a lot of game or something like that. That stuff's all pretty much irrelevant. The only thing that matters in terms of getting a woman to submit to you, the only two things that matter are that she trusts you and that you guys have adequate amounts of communication. Now, I know that sounds like, uh, that sounds like soft advice compared to what I would normally give, but in this situation, you know, it's just a different process, guys. It's a different way of going about things. The reason why trust is so important is because we all know that women are emotional beings, right? They react emotionally before anything else, right? Their emotions come first. Their feelings come before facts. Feels over reels, as some Manosphere guys would say. So the reason why trust is so important is because a woman has to be able to trust you with her emotions. Because when a woman submits to you, you have almost complete control over her emotions. You can make her sad, you can make her happy, you can make her angry, you can make her depressed, you can mess with her self-esteem, you can do a lot of things. So if a woman can't trust you with her emotions, she's gonna be very unlikely to submit to you. You know, this is why a lot of red pillars will say, you know, women with bad attitudes or independent women, <clears throat> these type of women are like, that's a red flag and you should avoid these types of women. I'm gonna be honest with you. <clears throat> I think women with bad attitudes and who uh, present themselves as independent are some of the most submissive women out there and the reason why they're acting independent and bitchy and have bad attitudes is because they want to uh, scare off the weak guys. You know what I mean? They have these walls built up so only a very select man can actually get through that wall and get her to submit. And those women tend to be a lot more faithful because it's, a, it's really difficult for the average man to, to get through that wall. And I suppose I should explain a little bit about how to build trust. Most people, when they hear the term trust, they think, you know, in terms of, are you being honest? Do your words line up with your actions and things like that? And that matters. Like you do want to develop that type of trust as well. But 
the type of trust that I'm talking about has more to do with when she tells you things, when she's, you know, when she's letting you get to know her and you're finding out more about her, she wants to know that you're not judging her. And when you're talking to her, you're not talking at her, you're talking with her. You know, your moments aren't about you wanting to perform and you wanting to look good. It's more about you sharing moments with her. You know what I mean? You know, it's hard to explain these sort of things. These are human interactions that some of us just understand and naturally get, naturally understand. And some people it takes a little bit of time. But you have to naturally get it so you can just be your natural self and allow these things to unfold. If a woman doesn't trust you, she'll be unable to be vulnerable around you. And she has to be vulnerable if she's gonna submit. You know, she has to let her guard down and show you her codependent side. You know, most people don't wanna show their codependent side because it looks weak. You know, it's also, it puts you in a situation where somebody could take advantage of you, judge you, or something of that nature. So when a woman gets vulnerable and shows you her codependent side, it's the, it's like a metaphorical equivalent to her falling and expecting you to catch her. So she's, she's trusting you, she's being vulnerable around you, and she expects you to not misuse it, you know, to use it for the right reason. So anyways, trust is the first thing. And the second thing is communication. Communication is just about um, being your authentic self and communicating what, you know, what you value. Just basically, just be yourself. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. Because at the end of the day, people want to go home to somebody that they feel like has their back and they have yours. You know, that's what a relationship is supposed to be about. You have her back and she has yours. Now, men and women are not equal. They're totally different. Men are more physically and in a lot of ways more mentally capable than women. Men are the breadwinners, you know, the leaders, all of that. But uh, if you've ever had a good woman, you know she can bring a lot to the table too. You know, and sometimes it's as simple as you had a shitty day and you go home and you know she's just there for you you know what I mean whether whether it's just spending time maybe she cooks for you maybe it's the sex you know whatever it is there's just something about having that woman there for you that can completely change your day around so you know she can have your back in ways that nobody else and your life can have your back. You know, it's, it's just a certain, it's like a certain power that women have. Yeah, it's like a healing power almost. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but uh, hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. And that's really where the communication is. It's you guys understanding each other and having each other's backs. Now, <clears throat> a good example of... Um, getting a woman to submit and I'm sure a lot of people have probably brought this up in similar video topics but a good example of this would be <clears throat> Fifty Shades of Grey the movie and the book now most people are so surface level they see this movie and they think well okay women like men that are kinky and dominant and you know into that BDSM shit in the bedroom that's very surface level, guys. That's not, that's not why that's so popular. If that were the reason why that was so popular, women would just watch porn and they wouldn't even care about that movie. They would get, you know, straight to the kinky shit. The reason why that movie is so popular is because it feeds a woman's fantasy and idealization 
of being with a man that they trust enough to, you know, let him do those things to them. So in the movie, the, uh, the male star of the movie spends most of the time trying to convince the woman to allow him to do the BDSM stuff to her, right? And she's, she's not into it. She's not into him. She's not into that sort of a lifestyle. <clears throat> but throughout time, he gains her trust, and then she's willing to let him do that. <clears throat> and no woman wants to be tied up and handcuffed. Nobody wants to be tied up and handcuffed, right? But the reason why this is a fantasy for a lot of women is because they're able to trust a man enough to where he can tie them up and handcuff them and he could he could murder them if he was a bad guy he could r-a-p-e them he could do all sorts of bad things to him but she trusts him enough to where she still feels safe and comfortable even when she's tied up and handcuffed so that's what that movie represents that's a good example of a woman submitting to you and doing it willingly and naturally because she wants to do it not because you're forcing her to do it because a lot of guys will force a woman to do it and or manipulate a woman to do it. For example, guys will um, lead with money and think just because their, their sexual market value is above hers, they can use that as leverage to get her to submit. But what happens in those situations is those guys get finessed by gold diggers and clout chasers and you know women that just want to use them for things it's inauthentic and it doesn't work so that's not a good strategy authenticity is always the best strategy in this particular situation <clears throat> now you know that's a movie and that's a book i suppose i can give you uh some instances in my own life some examples of a woman submitting so where do i start where do i where do i go with this one okay so Okay, here's a small example. I'll start with a small example, then I'll start to think of a maybe a bigger example. So, here's a small example. My ex-girlfriend comes home from work, and she has cigarettes in her purse. And I, you know, I ask her, you know, where those came from. I didn't, you know, since when did you start smoking? I didn't know you smoked. What happened? And she said that... Uh, some of the people that she worked with, some of her uh, friends from work, smoke cigarettes on their breaks. And, you know, they all take breaks together. So she started smoking with them. Now, most Manosphere content creators that are geared towards, like, the red pill alpha male space, which I guess I'm a part of, too. Um, most people would tell you, you need to give her an ultimatum in a situation like this, right? So you need to uh, basically say something like, look, if you're gonna be smoking cigarettes with these little punk ass motherfuckers that you work with, then you gotta choose. Either you're smoking cigarettes with those punk ass motherfuckers, or in, in that case, our relationship's over, or you quit smoking if you value this relationship. Those are your only options. <clears throat> you know, that's the alpha, way, alpha male way of pitching that the problem with that is she's not willingly submitting you're intimidating her into submission which never works out in the long term eventually she's going to be like okay this guy's kind of a dick i'm getting tired of his controlling behavior and she's going to want to leave but i presented it in a way of okay why did you start smoking well you know it's it's stressful at work so cigarettes help relieve stress at, at break Okay, cool. Well, you know, cigarettes do not actually reduce stress. They are not actually good for you. As a matter of fact, you know, they, there are no advantages to smoking cigarettes. But there are disadvantages. You run out of breath quick. It makes you out of shape. You can get cancer. Um, it makes you smell bad. It's a big waste of money. It looks trashy. The list goes on and on. <clears throat> but because she trusted me and she was submitted to me, my words mattered to her. So the next day she comes home and she doesn't have cigarettes. I say, what happened to the cigarettes? She says, I thought about what you said 
and you're right. I threw the cigarettes away and I don't, I don't need to smoke them anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. So I didn't have to force her to do anything. She trusted me enough to listen to what I said and just go along with it, right? That's a very small situation, but in life, those are the type of situations that you go through on a daily basis. And if you want to know if a woman submitted to you, you'll know just by situations like that. Does she actually listen to what you say and go along with it? Um, that's just an indicator that she's submitted. I guess a larger situation would be, let me think of something here. All right, one night, it was a Sunday night, and there was some event going on at a nightclub that, you know, it was a kind of a big event, and she wanted to go. All of her girlfriends were going. So, you know, she brings it up to me, and she's, like, begging me to go. She wants, you know, she wants me to go with her. And I have to get up at 5.30 the next day, and I have to give a speech first thing in the morning to a bunch of people that I work with. <clears throat> So I'm already feeling anxious and I'm like, shit, I got to get up at like 4 a.m. I can't be out drinking until 2 a.m. So why don't you just go without me, go with your girlfriends, I'll stay at home and sleep and, you know, everything will be cool. And she got so mad at me, so pissed off that I would even think that she would go out to the club without me being there. You know, and it wasn't that like, wasn't an issue of like jealousy or anything like that. It was just that she would rather fight, argue, and eventually just stay home than to go out without me, without me being there. And that fight was an example of communication. Sometimes fighting is the best strategy of communication. Like it, it really is a very good method of communication because it let me know that, you know, she wasn't gonna do anything to jeopardize the relationship, that she was fully submitted to me. And, you know, it's just the way that it is, you know, but uh, I didn't have to tell her like, look, if you go out with your girlfriends tonight, this relationship is over. You know, a lot of red pill guys will tell you to say that. No, I, I didn't have to say that. I didn't even think to say that. But the result was she wasn't going to go out without me. You know, she knows that uh, there's a bunch of dudes out there that are just going to try to fuck her when she's all drunk and shit. And, you know, she's more comfortable with me being there. You know, and that's the way a woman behaves when she has fully submitted to you. But anyways, guys, I'm recording this on the uh, cinematic view, so I've probably gone on too long. It's, I'm going to have a really hard time editing it because it's going to move really slow. So I'm going to go ahead and end this one. But just remember, you cannot force a woman to submit to you. The only way you can make it happen is through trust and communication. So be your authentic self. You know, work on building trust. So she feels like she can trust you with every part of her mind, body, and soul. And she will naturally submit to you and have good communication too. In that order, trust and communication. But all right, guys, I'm going to have to cut this one off. I'm going to edit this and I got to go out tonight. So I got to bounce right now. Good chat, guys. Hope you learned something and I'm out of here. Her ass is up in the air. You are hitting her G spot, pumping out orgasm after orgasm after orgasm. The best she's ever had. Her ass is up in the air, having a non stop orgasm. Tied up, spread eagle. But that's a story for another day.